Platinum versus the Chiefs. LeBlanc, Nunu, Hecarim, the three bands there for the CAS side. So very smart stuff coming through. And the Chiefs here, Lulu, uh, their first band here. I believe they have lost a band. Yes, they did indeed lose one for talking during a pause. Yeah, they certainly did. They had a little bit of a chat, unfortunately. That is against the rules, so they get slapped on the wrist with a band. So see whether that one affects the game plan at all. But they take away Rek'Sai away from Symphony as well. We saw that Symphony, one of the junglers that does like to go back to Rek'Sai. Yeah, Rek'Sai strong stuff. And Gragas instantly picked up here by Hard Random. Seems to do when Hecarim isn't around. Everybody wants to first pick the Gragas. Yeah, and the thing about the Chiefs, which I find really funny, is everyone would have done research on them. They wouldn't have played how they played in the Oceanic Pro League. They picked up LeBlanc. They picked up the Hecarim. And all of a sudden, these are just reactionary bands from this tournament. Swiper not really known for his carry uh, top laners, and all of a sudden he's right back on the tanks where he started. Yeah, gonna get there on the Malka and Callista picked up by Red, one of his best performing AD carries locally here as well. So good first picks there, very fast pickups as well by the Chiefs. So seem to have a plan coming in here, and certainly we're gonna look yesterday at that last game and think we've totally got this for the 3-0, but 2-1 now have a defeat, now have to keep moving forward up, but this will be a good win for them, sitting second, I believe, so far, right now in the standings. Yeah, certainly are, and this is a pressure game for the Chiefs because this is their only game of the day so they would have put a lot of focus on it but if they lose it they go back to 2-2 and they're actually equal with hard random so everything on the line here funny thing about that uh, Callista pickup is Radius started the season not being able to play Callista and then slowly was able to pick up the champion overnight it just was like he was naturally born towards it so I'm interested to see how this one works out against a very aggressive lane coming through it is going to be Lex on the Graves and probably Smurf on the Morgana. Yeah, I actually love this here. I mean, Morgana could be a support. I do like it taken away from Rosie and the Callista lane in general, but Graves nice and aggressive here. You do want to kind of give it to Callista in the early lane if you can, and Graves and Eddie Carrier, they can probably do that. Yeah, certainly can. Smurf is also a top lane Morgana player. Generally do see it up there, but Demonko might be able to pick it up. Very wary to play Morgana against Callista laners because as soon as you miss that bind, and it's just open season, Callista can go nuts. Yeah, I mean, when Callista goes nuts, that's always a problem, which is why you're like giving them the Morgana in their lane to enable you to go nuts. No clicks, no point in click CC to ruin your fun times here. But again, if Radia can find a foothold and did have, I have to say some shaky moments there on the Civi yesterday. If you can pick it up on a very mechanically intensive champion like Callista, that's a big boost for their overall confidence and Radia's personal confidence as well. But we're going to go all hard engage today for the Chiefs. It's Sejuani and Thresh. Yeah, and the complaint we had about their composition yesterday, Papa Smithy very vocal about it, was the fact that the Nunu pick did not fit the comp at all. Gave no hard engage. So now this time with the Sejuani, that and Spades, you can pick up the Thresh, throw it. Rosie, known for his Thresh play domestically, didn't pick it up during the se uh, season. It was a huge point, but now obviously going back to it. So it is the Callista Thresh lane coming through, and we'll have to see how that works out. Yes, good stuff there. Lots of mobility, of course, coming through. So I like the pickup, but hard random. Got a few more champions to consider. Can do just about anything, honestly, with their first few picks. Got nice... A good amount of flexibility there with Morgana especially, and Graves is pretty happy in almost any lane matchup when you pair him with a support, so we'll see what they want to do. Going to have to blind pick a mid laner here as well as the Chiefs. They've left that counter pick open for Swiffer. Yeah, certainly have, and they were trying to go for something long range. Now go over to the Vladimir. That is a very late game focused last couple of picks coming through from the hard random players. Kira going to be taking Vladimir into the mid lane, and that will be a support Morgana. So in the top lane, Smurf will have Sion. Yeah, Sion there against the Malka. So lots of split farm in that potential top lane matchup. But the Chiefs, how do they want to complete their team comp? We've seen a lot of two threat comps on this patch here, especially given how tanky the junglers and often the top laners are. So, I mean, Callista. Good damage, but can't quite carry a game just by herself. So what do the Chiefs want to do? And Swiffer going to go back to his Anivia. Yeah, so Swiffer actually really values this lane matchup nearly to a fault. He thinks that Anivia does terrifically well against Vladimir. I'm not decided on it because I think that Vladimir can just farm up in the lane. I think that if Kira can just get to the two, three item points, will become a late game powerhouse. But there is a little bit of a lack of hard initiate. Symphony, a lot of pressure to be able to get in there with the Flash Body Slam Ultimate to be able to start it up. The Chiefs just have so much control in their composition. This is a Chiefs comp coming through. They're able to disengage, re-engage. They've got some pick elements. And their Siege is relatively good as well. I mean, Anivia is a pick that, again, 
locally we definitely saw the Chiefs play a lot of it. Actually, the final they played it twice in their 3-0 victory. I think Envy is actually really good in this meta game to me. When you have all these big tanks, these melee champions, or even these hyper carries trying to get in and just do lots of damage, the likes of Cogmore, the likes of Callista, actually, she's excellent against her. When you put down a glacial storm in some sort of team fight, nobody wants to walk through it. It's not fun. Yeah, exactly right. And sometimes you just can't walk through it because you've got all the CC keeping you in there. It does so much damage. Not to mention the fact that that is a surprisingly good lane to gank. All of a sudden, you got Sejuani that slows people. You got a Nivea that gets the free crit coming through from the E on Sejuani ta targets when the permafrost comes across. It's just bad news. Yeah, cool stuff coming through. And maybe I'm personally excited to see Nivea Wall of Cyanalty because he's going to face plant right into it as well. Yeah, that's the other thing that can come through there. Much like Trundle Pillar Scion can't break through that Wall of Ice. So that's going to be an interesting mechanic to see. That seems thematically incorrect to me, I have to say. I feel like science will be able to break through. Yeah, so do I. I think you just should shatter it. The Sand Soldier is the other confusing one. How can a big undead dude not get through Emperor's Divide? That's eight, man. Those are some, that's a big shield, right, that they put up. <laughs> We've seen no one can get through Emperor's Divide, apparently. It's yeah, far exactly. too oh, We have seen many champion try and a lot fail. <laughs> we have indeed, but strong comps on both sides here. The Chiefs especially seem to get a lot of what they want, but we are about to get onto the Rift, and it's a tough game for both teams here. Really Really want to pick themselves up, get a game win here, and push themselves further up the table for the Chiefs. It's a little closer to first. If a hard random, it's closer back into the middle of the pack. Yeah, so hard random. This is nearly do or die. They have such a steep road ahead if they are not able to pick up a win here. So they're grouping up early, looking for the invade. They have some good CC with the Morgana, with Sion coming through. So we'll have to see whether they can get anything done. We'll probably talk about it a lot today if we see more Sejuani. But we can, you can pressure these tanky junglers, Sejuani especially. So hard random, looking to maybe get some early vision down or possibly even perform a late invade. Yeah, so they're looking for it. A recall coming through now for Demonko, or is that... Domonko and Lex both going back. So they're abandoning the invade. And it just looks like we'll have standard lane. No, lane swap is coming through. Yeah, they have tricked you. They're walking their dual lane up to the top are the CIS representatives. And I think Callista probably wants to dodge the matchup, maybe expecting the Chiefs to swap to the top early on. But Swiper going to set up his saplings here for this camp. And you see the Chiefs they may, might have to guess here given the vision that they have or more accurately don't have. It's very shallow vision for both teams, actually. But if they're going to guess, it seems like they're going to guess right. Yeah, exactly right. So they'll get the free lane for Callista. You have to think that Thresh probably a little bit better of a roam because Morgana, if she misses that Dark Bind, doesn't really offer much follow-up CC until level 6. But in the top lane, they will get the freeze, whereas it looks like the Chiefs are going for a Grump start. Yeah, and Spooks has to start his Krugs on his own there as well. Domonko going to try and take him away, but Swiper going to keep going on the camp. Morgana should be able to force him off here potentially, so he'll get a couple, but not the whole camp. Yeah, definitely will, and they've started on the top side of the map, so Domonko, after seeing Swiper loop around like that, should know where Spooks is, so... It is a little bit dangerous now trying to go for this red buff. Demonko, nice stuff. Actually going to continue pressuring on and try and check things out. And Spooks and Swiper might dodge it completely. They know that Hard Random have swapped to the top side of the map. They can see Graves there. And it's not safe right now to take the left side of your jungle. Yeah, it certainly isn't. And right now, I'm going to throw a spanner in the work and say, Smurf, you need to go die to red buff as well. Whiffer gets binded there. And Kira going to come back in. But Rosie roaming in there as well. Smurf has gone down. But that's just who a minion. And Demonko going to get aggressed on Rosie just had the flay and went for the roam. Yeah, and they get, the, they get the exhaust out. So in the end, a big advantage coming across to the Chiefs. You saw right there, Smurf, he grabbed two camps. He grabbed Raptors as well as Krogs. I would have said that it probably would have been a little bit more advantageous if he went for the red buff because probably on this side of the map, Greg is not going to be able to get it. He's got control over the top side of the map and you can die against red buff and auto attack it to death whilst you're dead. And it's a little bit more experienced, but more importantly, denies that from Smoot. It Spooks. does indeed. As you can see, now a 1v1 matchup in the bottom side. Callista up against the Sion. And this is exactly where Callista wants to be in the early game. Don't have to worry too much about early farmers. Rosie going to come through, maybe look for a gank. But instead, just make sure his AD carries safe. Yeah, so he might get the flay back across. A little bit of damage, but Smurf, he's got that shield going to be completely fine. And now you see... Greg is being forced out of his jungle in a rock and a hard place. Yeah, this is the potential issue here. Nice invade here coming through for the
for the Chiefs, but Symphony, level three on the Greg is gonna fight out well, and it's 2v1 right now in the jungle, and the Chiefs not overly committing yet to the buff. Yeah, they're calling Rosie back up, so just power in numbers, making sure that they can get it done. They have got him spotted out with a ward, so they should be able to get this in the end, but they were made to work they for it. They don't have their mid laner, though, crucially, is actually being kept in the lane right now, and Morgana's even rotated down. They do force him off here, but Tomonko gonna go ahead and check the red buff, it seems like, gonna see it there, and Gragas might be able to take that away instead. So they're looking for another engage onto Swiffer. They might get him. Yeah, they are. He's actually gonna force the flash there from Anivia, but maybe the re-roam is gonna come through here for the Chiefs. There's been so much action around the mid lane in the first four minutes of this game. Yeah, and Sion, he's a huge benefit for that because he's been able to stay in the bottom lane, farm up. You see Swiper, he's got no farm whatsoever, and that's a 400 gold advantage already coming across the hard random. That's first blood just on their top laner from being able to pick up the CS. Yeah, nice stuff there as Rosie is back in the mid side as well. Going to try and set something up. Vlad, pretty hard to gank here, but Rosie looking for a play. Doesn't find it there. And again, keeping up the aggressive roaming. You're right, Sion's definitely the one getting a lot of benefits from the early roaming that coming through. But on the Chief side, it's Radia and his Kalissa that's getting the same benefits. Yeah, so Radia, he's farming up nicely, but he is currently equal, at least, with the opposition uh, AD carry, whereas Swiper, he's just so far behind the top laners. Once again, they're going to be forced off the Raptor. No, finally does smite that one away. However, needs to be careful here. Yeah, Symphony does take away the red buff. Those spooks will just try and move in to clear it there. It does have the double buffs actually, but Symphony a level edge there. So a very weird game where buffs were sort of stolen diagonally across from each other in a lane swap. But as it turns out, junglers, neither of them will lose the buff early on. Yeah, so everyone kind of equal here. Spooks has gone back, grabbed himself a pink ward. Needs to help top lane to shove it out. This is one of the advantages Gragas had over to over Sejuani. Sejuani cannot break freezes. I mean, not easily at least. Here is Demonka going to try and zone out Swiper. Lex is level 5 though here with the Doran's Blade on the gra Graves. And yeah, just going to get aggressive. Spooks wants to help, but it's so difficult. Yeah, there's just no way you force that out unless you throw like... You need to get the saplings in there, but even then you can't kill the back wave. And they've engaged. Yeah, they're actually going to go in. His boot's getting low to Symphony, who's just walking into the top side. Might even consider a dive as the Chiefs throw a trinket ward over just to make sure it's safe. And Spooks, he's going back, but Swiper is going to get dove. The binding lands onto Spooks as well. He takes a good chunk of damage, and it's so unsafe under this turret. Yeah, there's no way he can get back either. Symphony, he's got the flash at body slam available. They just might choose to go for this good, one. Good body block there by Swiper. Of its spooks cancels his recall yet again, and Lex he's perilously close to level six. You have to think, and that'll make the dive all too easy. A good trailblazer smite there will AOE down the way, but now Swipe is the one going to get caught up. And there's just so much poke under this turret. Yeah, but Symphony he took an extra turret shot. I think that they can both recall now, actually canceling it again. So they're trying to stick around. This is extremely greedy play. Lex hits level six. Yeah. This is real dangerous. Rosie, though, with the Moby Boots, is dashing towards the top lane here as well, trying to equalize. Will have his Lantern up at level three now. So HR are going to go in. Might try and fancy a dive here, but Rosie will join in. And a very interesting standoff here under the tower leaves nobody dead. Yeah, so nobody dies. Rosie comes in. Lex, he started up the refreeze. So he grabs a minion wave, drags it back towards the brush. And we might actually get a little bit of normalcy after an extended top lane, I guess, pressure situation came through. Smart stuff from both junglers, honestly. Spooks wanted to come in and try and break the freeze, and Symphony recognizing that came in a major, sure he couldn't. So, again, really nice stuff coming through, but Swiper still far behind on this Malka. Yeah, he is so far behind. 15 CS to 41. It's now up to nearly a 1,000 gold advantage, and you have to think majority of that is on the top lane, as although mid lane falling behind as well. Yeah, you can see now as well, Vladimir with a good lead there. We talked about the matchup here. Swiffer seems to fancy it, but going to be a bit tricky, especially as Vlad gets stronger and stronger. Now, currently level 7, now completed his revolver as well. Yeah, so he's right up there being pretty strong on this part of the map. As you see, Radio and Rosie, they're helping farm out. They might be able to pick up the first dragon, although that's a little bit late because Vlad did recall and... Now they're try trying to get an objective on the map. Yeah, smart stuff as Swiffer rotates up out from the mid lane. Sorry, takes it out with his ultimate Glacial Storm. And they'll get the Scuttle Crab, but don't quite commit to the Dragon yet. Yeah, so they don't actually go for it. That's crazy because they have the teleport advantage. Swiper, although only level 4, can join the fight. Graves cannot. So that's not a good thing coming through. But in the end, it's just going to be some more farming coming through. Again, a bit of poke there coming in. Demonka going to check once again and just force Swiffer off his creep wave by threatening with the binding. Does miss, but does tag him for a bit of extra gold there with the pull. I guess the thing is, 
if the lands neutralize like this, both Vlad and Nivea will get what they want here in the early game, and that's just to secure as much farm as possible. Yeah, it certainly is. So Vlad and Nivea, they're not really caring. Swiffer, if he's 10 CS behind, it doesn't really matter. And Nivea, now that level 7, just will be able to farm out so well with the ultimate. The real danger is that Swiper is just continuing to fall further and further behind. Look at even the items coming through here. It is the components of a Spirit Visage as well as a Frozen Heart to two Doran Rings and Boots. It's just... Maokai is going to be so far behind that Cyan's going to do his job and better throughout the entirety of the game. Yeah, and Rosie's actually rotated up into the top side finally, and I think they probably needed to do this earlier. I recognize that he did want to roam and try and impact the Mac early for kills, but the fact that he hasn't been able to is what's part of why Swipe has been so far behind. Yeah, and the thing about Cyan with the changes is that he 2v1's completely fine. He's just able to use that decimating smash. You can't really force him off farm at all, even in the 2v1 situation. So just go join your top laner, be your support, help push out the wave. Instead, he stuck around on the bottom side of the map way too long, and it's really the top laner that was made pay. Yeah, Swiffer as well, low there in the mid side after a trog with Vlad, it looks like. So starting to get a little low. Does have the passive, of course, but it's very squishy early on, even with the catalyst. Yeah, certainly is, but you see they're trading damage relatively evenly. Spooks is here as well. Good wall there coming in. Have to try and bait out the pool. Does find it, but Spooks, not even level 6, can't threaten with the ultimate. Yeah, can't threaten with the ult, but they get the pull out. We'll, they'll see if they can make anything else happen here. No, just a bit of damage coming in. Symphony will join in. It's a little low, actually, on the Gragas, but is level 6, so has his ulti to push them off the turret if they look for a dive. Vlad's pool will come back up and good aggression there by Swift for winning that trade as Smurf down in the bottom side getting good damage onto this turret. Yeah, it certainly is. Level 8 is three levels ahead of Swiper as well. Smurf is doing really well. He's only 10 CS behind the mid laners pretty much in terms of farming. You can see that is exactly why. Just being able to use that decimating smash. He's actually still maxing the shout. And they've sent Swiper down now to try and deal with it. It's very risky. Swiper has to be careful. Does hit level 6, though, so we'll be a little bit safer. I can see the swap. He does need to get some farm and will finally pick some up here. But Sion at one point was four levels ahead. Yeah, exactly right. He's an absolute monster. He's double ECS pretty much. And now they'll probably give away the Dragon as well, although they're swapping back straight away. So the AD carrying support not even showing, just making sure that they can get some farm. And maybe they've finally mind game themselves back to even lanes. But it's already a 1,400 gold lead over to Hard Random. They've really won this early game. Yeah, such smart stuff. And again, that's without a single killer turret being taken, although that might change quite quickly here as they will be able to get the bottom turret taken out. Lex, far too strong right now with a bit of quick draw action and the pickaxe and the BF sword already done. Yeah, so now a lot of pressure on the Chiefs lineup. Can they turn this early game around? They're in a position to maybe challenge for the Dragon. However, with how big Scion is right now, it's going to be a risky fight. Need to make sure that they get some good ward control. I don't know. Yeah, Lex, he's really strong at this point. Smurf's so strong. Maybe the Chiefs just have to continue to stall, but in saying that, it's not even convincing that their late game is that much stronger. No, I mean, they, they do have some good late game options. I think it's actually fairly neutral looking through as we look over on mid lane. Actually, a pretty big bevy of action. Swiffer with Spooks' help once more is really trying to get first blood. Yeah, he certainly is. They're trying to pick on the Vladimir, but with double defensive summoners as well as that pull, good luck. Kira is not going anywhere in this lane, so I think that a little bit more pressure needs to be put bottom lane and see if they can maybe get the Callista ahead because at the end of the day, she's the one that kind of has to deal with the uh, Cyan anyway. Yeah, as we can see down in the bottom side, Lex continuing to farm away there as well. Does have about 10 CS ahead there of Radio Swiffer. Low on health and mana now. Going to get Spooks to help him push out the lane. But I guess this is the other thing that's interesting about this matchup is that Vladimir does certainly get stronger when he gets to this point, level 9 now with the Revolver, but... Just doesn't have to use mana, so never worries about going oom. Yeah, exactly right. So he's going to be able to repetitively shove out. They're going to grab the first dragon as well as the first turret. That's 2,400 in the top lane. Ultimate was even burnt by Smurf. He's three levels still ahead of Swiper, so he's bullying this lane, showing that he's dominant and not letting any CS. That lead is actually growing as we speak. And all over, Hard Random has every advantage on the map. And this is all purely... Uh like strategy stuff here from Hard Random. No kills yet, just really good rotations, great level one presence, and just some smart moving around the maps mean that some, someone had to suffer. It was Swiper. Damonko does take a good chunk of damage. You can see the Callista mechanics really on point here early on for Radio in the game, but Chiefs definitely need to batten down the hatches and 
prepare for what might be a pretty a pretty strong push coming through because the mid game rolls around about 20 minutes in and hard random can turn on at any time but Rosie trying to look in he wants to fight he finds onto Domonko does use the box the two goes wide they are going to go in but Rosie just eats the uh, collateral damage there from Lex and goes down now Smurf actually going to come down as well Radiant has to be careful does flash over the wall doesn't trust his hop but Lex flashing over the binding almost in as well and too much damage from the graves uses the heal and that's a double kill for the bottom lane yeah so in the end they give up first blood and they lose everything the one lane they maybe had an advantage on Rosie misses every skill in his kit and he's just not able to get any work done really well played by a hard random, and now all of a sudden, that Graves that we were talking about, 2 0 0. Yeah, and that Graves ult to such a good early game, too. You saw the Chiefs tried to set it up, used everything to get in, thought they could win the trade, and all of a sudden, that one Graves ult just does far too much damage in the early and game. And they're still going. Rosie gonna get dope here. Great ult by Symphony. Rosie dead there to Gragerson. They're not stopping the push. No, nah, they're gonna be able to pick up a tier two turret at 14 minutes into the game. 4,000 gold is going to be the lead, and wow, the Chiefs are really. Yeah, they are. I mean, this early game went from bad to worse here in the CIS team. Hard random looking great early on here. You can look at that gold lead. 4,000 up already. Swiffer will steal away the blue buff, but we've talked about him being a big carry for his team. He has to really put on his carry pants today. Yeah, he certainly does, and he's not even ahead of the Vlad. In fact, he's 30 CS behind. Hasn't won a lane on the map, the Chiefs, and... They're behind in every single key measurable. Yeah, dragons, towers, CS in all the lanes, kills. Scaling, I think they're behind. Like, I don't, like, maybe Sejuani has the advantage. I think Sion has the advantage over Maokai. Vladimir is the best late game uh, mid laner if you have engaged. And I think that maybe they're in a position that they will have enough engaged now hard random. So, yeah, every single part of the game that you can pretty much measure the Chiefs are losing. Well, that's not good news, unfortunately, for the Oceanic team, but great news for the CIS side here in Hard Random, and we'll see what they do with their lead, and it's a big one early on, despite the fact that it's only 4,000 gold ahead at 60 minutes into the game. That is very significant. Yeah, it certainly is, and it means completed items where there's only components. Vlad, he's got his Woda built up, as well as, wow, an Infinity Edge and a Phantom Dancer to only the Bloodthirster. Top lane, much of the same. Frozen Heart doesn't even have to itemize for the lane. It looks like Swiper is freezing bottom lane, but they're just going to give up everything. Top lane turret now going down it, as well. It's dead. That's going to be the third out of Feld there by Hard Random. And they'll get another spike of gold to push themselves back up to about 4,500. And we looked down some of the items. We mentioned a lot of the completed stuff. I guess my interest and my question for you, Spawn, is look at that Skirmisher Saber there for the Gragas. Yeah, so Gragas getting a lot of auto attacks in in these fights. Also good damage again. Uh, sorry. Wow. Yeah, diving onto Radius. Books is coming in. Good two-man ulti there. Lands and the box is down as well. Hook will just go wide, but the Fates Call's moved in, and Swiper will get a kill. Radius does get out there with the Martial Poison. Swiper taking up wonderfully in the middle, gives Radius a kill. Now Swift is going to come up. He's trying to kill Lex, but there's too much damage. The Hemo Plague's down. Smurf going in, does go down finally, and Swiffer falls to Lex as well. A two-for-two two trade there in the top side. Yeah, so in the end, hard random even win that one as Kira flashes in. Wants to try and kill Spooks, but can't get it done, though. Might just take the Tier 2 instead. Yeah, so they might be able to push in. Minion Wave will come up. And, of course, it is still relatively early into the game, although good zoning coming through from Kira. He makes sure the Minion Waves don't crash. They'll grab that turret. All of a sudden, 6,000 gold advantage. Yeah, great proxy there as well. That's going to be the fourth turret going down now as well. And that was the, that's with that mid turret still up as well. And smart stuff for them to not try and push against the Anivia. Yeah, exactly right. Why push against the Anivia? You're winning every lane. anivia has got great stall potential. It was a good turnaround coming through from the Chiefs, but realistically, they've lost that much of the map that now they can't even defend mid lane turret because Swiffer, he's got no passive and he's just so easy to dive. Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing with Anivia, very squishy. Now only had the Rod of Ages for a couple minutes here. Didn't get it that quickly and will tank up eventually, but that will take quite a while here for the bird coming through. Working on the Chalice, you have to think there as well. Far too late for any sort of Tier of the Goddess at this stage of the game. But unfortunately, there's still scaling to be done for the Chiefs, and Hard Random going to go for their next Dragon in about a minute's time. Yeah, exactly right. And they're just so far behind. 6,000 gold, the advantage. They need this game to go for another 30 minutes for them to ever catch up. As Symphony, he's caught out a little bit, but you see Swiffer's damage just isn't there. No, not quite a good wall, though. We'll keep him off there. Ulti used there by Gragas to get the Anivia out of the way, but... 
A lot of this potential is defensive here for the Chiefs. Spooks is really the only one that can make some big plays. And you can see Hard Random rotating wonderfully to get the four turrets they've collected. Yeah, exactly right. They're just going to continue to shove in the sideways. Then Chiefs have to go pick it up because they need the farm right now. And realistically, with how big Scion is, he's going to be able to turret dive at will. They've got the uh, follow-up damage to come through from Kira. He's completed two items, 50 CS of up, even though Spooks was camping out that mid lane. And they will stall for as long as possible, but I just don't know how much they can do. No, and the poke coming through. Kira actually tanking turret shots with the Black Shield on him and just transfusing people to poke them away. It's not. It's a weird-looking siege comp for Hard Random, but given the lead that they have already in this game, they're up to 5,500 gold ahead. They can do whatever they want almost at this stage of the game, and it's, what they want right now is to take their second dragon. Yeah, exactly right. So put a timer on the game. Make sure that even if it goes super late, you have the get dragon advantages. That's a good objective to pick up. Did give Swiffer a free back to come through, so that's good news for the Chiefs at least. As Rady gets tagged by a bind. And a huge wave crashed into the top lane turret as that happened, but they'll be able to take this mid lane turret yes. now. Swiffer comes back, but he's not quite in time to defend. Will take down the mini wave, probably prevent the tier two from falling as well as the good clear does come through, but the Chiefs forced to stick together for a lot of these pushes, and that's going to mean they're going to struggle to find the farm that they're really looking for. Yeah, exactly right. They've only got one major item on every carry, so it's not going their favor. You see that they've picked up a blue buff for themselves. I think that that's a misstep there from Hard Random. I think they could have pressured that one, and keeping a blue off of Nivea, who is so mana hungry, is definitely going to be one of the key objectives if they're going to close this game out early, because the danger is the standing gold on the map. So... What the Chiefs need to do is recognize that they've completely lost the early game. So throw that one out. Subsequently, probably throw out the mid game as well up until the 35 minute mark just because of where they've lost to. Batten down the hatches over your base because a Graves Vladimir don't siege, uh, siege at all well. Hope you don't get dove. And if you do, react accordingly with the Sejuani and just farm out late waves with your Anivia, with your Callista. Get to a relative late game stage where you feel like you can fight and try and take it from there. Because if they fight right now, they're a major behind, item behind in every slot. Yeah, and the Chiefs, they've honestly been always strong at team fighting. A line that's been together for quite a while. One of the longest standing lineups in the world, actually, not even just domestically. They definitely know how to play together when it really counts in the clutch moments. But right now, it's just all in hard random's favor right now. They've done such a good job of getting ahead in the early stages of the game. And again, it was subtle things. There wasn't a first blood for about 15 minutes in this game. And there's only been seven kills in a 21-minute game. Hard random have just outmoved them, outrotated them, just outplayed them in the early stages. Yeah, I think Chiefs kind of mind game themselves. They thought that they had the one-on-one -on -one lanes and realized that Callista was much more dangerous than Graves in that situation. But then Lex was just able to free farm against a Maokai and they couldn't stop the Scion and didn't react accordingly. So definitely agree with you that this is something that the Chiefs, they have been up against in the past. Some of their biggest wins uh, in the OPL were when they were hugely down and then were able to pull it back in team fighting. But right now against a 302 Infinity Edge Static Shiv Graves, it's just going to be a huge task, especially because Radia, he hasn't gone for that Renset build. He's going for double uh, lifesteal items. Yeah, I mean, I was actually going to ask you just about that there. What do you think of the build here? We have seen double lifesteal kind of eventually on Callista builds, but skipping the Hurricane seconds quite rare in recent play. Yeah, it certainly is as Swiffer gets his backstop. It's, the reason it's rare is because you just want to grab as much farm as possible and then uh, be able to get those huge Ren resets coming through on your uh, Callista helps you shove out waves really quickly, rejoin your team, team fight, she's a team fighting AD carry. This build doesn't give her that. What this build does give her is if they can't get on the back line to kill her, which Radier would be relatively confident in his mechanics that he can stay safe against the Scion Gragas, gives her a lot of persistent damage. Like, we'll be able to shred through multiple members here. Of course, won't have the uh, big crits coming through from the Infinity Edge but we'll just be able to save relatively safe. Yeah, Callista's in general seem to have abandoned Infinity Edge as an item. We see lots of focus on staying alive, being mobile, because like you said, you can just dish out so much damage. If you never die in a team fight as an AD carry, doesn't matter how long it takes, you'll kill everyone eventually. Yeah, exactly right. And that's what he's going for right now. 
if he is going to go that build, I would have expected him to pick up a couple of daggers because Bloodthirster and daggers is much better than Bloodthirster and Cutlass. As we might have a Baron stolen. Yeah, just going in there actually and hard random with Radiant down the bottom. Just go in. Spooks has dived in to try and take it away, but we'll go down to Lex instead. Tomoko gets hooked away. Might be able to pick up a kill here, but Lex going to die back in. Swiper is so squishy at this stage as the Grave's going to give himself a double. Trying to chase away. Do get the stun on Sakira, but the Chiefs 3v5 right now cannot fight. Yeah, exactly right. They give up the Baron, good wall comes through to stop the team joining, but how do they stop this turret siege? Yeah, Rosie gets bound as well. They might even be thinking about a dive onto the Morgana. Smurf is, by the way, back in the top side, just pushing out waves. Does have his teleport if he wants to join. And the Baron up minions here are simply going to take a little bit of poke. But Kira rushing forward. I love this place so much. Yeah, so they're able to stay aggressive there, and this is one thing that Aniviac doesn't deal well with, and that's Baron up minions. Chiefs have missed a trick here by giving over a free Baron just through lack of vision control. And really big props to Hard Random. 10,000 gold at 24 minutes in. Not an easy task, and they've done it against a Chiefs lineup that looked pretty impressive, K1. They're running the gauntlet. Yeah, great stuff here from Hard Random. Next Dragon up in a minute as well. Have a quick look just to see how far ahead they are at the items they've accrued already. Spirit of Azad's Frozen Heart Dump for Smurf. Lock it. Uh, Cinderhawk, Skirmisher, Saber, and a Sightstone already there for Symphony. Woda, Ab Abyssal Scepter. Merc Treads with the Distortion Upgrade for the sickest boots of all time on the Vlad. And a Need to See Large Rod. And even Lex now moving into his Bloodthirster third. Hard Random have everything they want at this stage of the game. Yeah, exactly right. They are so far ahead, it is not funny. That multiple completed components. And you look at Radir, he's sitting on the makings of a Blade of the Wrong King with a Bloodthirst, uh, with a Bloodthirster versus a three item with the Bloodthirster nearly finished up coming through from Lex. He's just He's nearly twice as strong as him at this point of the game. Yeah, I like the fact that Hard Random... I mean, the Baron obviously helps here for the Siege, but Kira multiple times has just walked under turrets and zoned people out just being on Vladimir, which opens up what is a very poor Siege otherwise into having great Siege potential. And the nice thing is, Chief, they can't not really afraid of getting engaged on because they can just Grag Assault people away. Yeah, exactly right. The Grag Assault, the pool can come through. How do you deal with the Vladimir that is playing that far forward? Not to mention the fact that he's forcing you that far back. You probably can't hit him anyway because he can just hit you and not get caught up as they're just going for the turret. Yeah, they are going to look in here. Baron up as well. He good ulti lands in onto four people, I believe, but they've got no follow-up, unfortunately. He does buy them some time, but the Baron buff still got a little bit left in the duration. And these cannon creeps are going to start to stack up. Yeah, and good luck engaging onto that. It hit Smurf, and he was just standing in the middle of everything laughing. This sign is absolutely gigantic, throwing minions at people now as well, and the Cannon Creep is starting to get some work done, and now no ults available for the Chiefs. The engage might be here. Yeah, I mean, they're just going to keep going in. They'll poke away. Lex will clear out the waves. Smurf is guarding the Cannon Creep. With his <laughs> that was amazing. He just flicks the cannon away with Scion. Yeah, so in the end, the Baron wears out. Maybe they get some respite coming through here. We said this was a part of the game the Chiefs wanted to get to. Batten down the hatches, all your outer turrets are gone. No, you no longer have to leave your base. Hopefully they can farm up enough, but hard random. They've done everything right this game. They've gone from strength to strength, and they're now picking up their third dragon. You would think that as soon as the Baron respawns, they'll have a monopoly over that. They'll ward up the chief side, top side of the jungle, because there's now six minutes that they don't have to worry about the bottom side of the map. And they're just doing everything perfectly. Yeah, wonderful stuff as they get their third dragon as well. And the fifth dragon, another win condition they can look for, but they don't even need to worry that much right now. 10,000 gold ahead still here at 27 minutes in. Kind of looking down the items. Nothing major completed just yet. Here is Lex. Going to pop himself to the top side of the map and clean out one massive wave for himself. Spooks is still getting buffs. That's probably the one big thing, although I may have spoke too soon as Smurf's in the jungle right now trying to take it away. Yeah, exactly right. Trying to force him off that one. Two levels high. We'll just be able to walk out and smite that most likely, but needs to be careful he doesn't get collapsed on there. Symphony's coming as well. I think they really want this buff as Smurf <laughs> flicks it, it away. away. It zones them off their own red buff quite literally by pushing it out of the way. And Symphony going to get some wards down as well. Yeah, so they're just trying to keep control of their... Uh, top side of the map, you have to respect them for at least going to that extent. And you see that they are moving as a unit. So they're doing some things right. However, Kira in the bottom wave, split pushing relatively effectively. 304 CS coming through on Vladimir. 100 clear of Swiffer. Now being collapsed on though, yeah. has gotten away. Vlad a big threat, but again, Sanguine pool, double mobility summoners and 
Pretty tanky right now, especially to the magic damage. It's so hard to catch him with the Merc Shreds that he's wearing on his feet as well. Kira's a big split push threat now as well, level 16. And that's another issue the Chiefs have to worry about. Yeah, exactly right. Look how quickly he runs up to that wave and he just clears it out with the Tides of Blood. Keep that one stacking. Two and the whole wave is gone. They are forcing CS into the Chiefs, but it's also very pressure heavy playstyle. How long before the Chiefs make a mistake and they can just dive and take everything? And we saw this in the game against Besiktas yesterday. It was just too many bad decisions they had to make and eventually something gave away. How random they were going to force the issue now, going to push themselves in towards that inhibitor. No Baron buff needed. It seems like Rosie does get poked out. They'll get a pick on this move, but Swiffer too aggressive there. Gets altered back by Gragas. Hemo play comes through. Kira doing massive damage and Rosie, he's already dead. Kira will go down there as Swiper picks it up, but there's too much follow-up in there. That's three dead already. Make for his raid here falls for the ace and a five for one win for CIS. And props to uh, Hard Random for just throwing caution to the wind, diving the turret. A great Gragas ultimate coming through from Symphony. Got Swiffer back into the middle of the team and they have mopped the floor of this Oceanic lineup. It's going to be a 30 minute victory. They won't be able to respawn in time and wow, what a convincing game. Absolutely massive play there and it all started at level one. We looked at the wild card region and thought, you know what? How much? How many lane stops are we going to see? What sort of level one are we going to see? And a perfectly executed first 10 minutes. Snowballs into a massive win here for Hard Random. The Nexus will explode. Cheese can't do anything. And a well-deserved win for Hard Random. Yeah, it certainly is. And once again, a convincing one in the bottom lane there. Lex went crazy on Graves. Completely took over that mid-game. And yeah, I'm speechless. That was every single lane, including jungle, getting ahead. Yeah, I mean, that's, I guess, the only way to talk about it. Swiper fell behind from the early lane swap. Graves looked just fine. They pushed their mid-game power where they had it. And to be honest, there wasn't that much mid-game pressure they could apply. I mean, Graves is great in maybe 15, 20 minutes' time, but by that point, they were so far ahead anyway, it probably didn't matter if he was playing Cogmore. Yeah, exactly right. And they were able to sneak away the Baron. They made strong strategical call after strong strategical call. And outclassed across the whole line up there. Rosie wasn't able to get anything done early. The one engage they went for gave away a double kill to the Graves player and really catapulted that game out of control. You understood what the Chiefs lineup was trying to do this time around, so at least their pick ban phase was better, but it just never got off the ground. And Hard Random kind of turned it around in one game almost. They, you know, struggled a little bit yesterday. They were definitely good hallmarks of their play, but it didn't feel together. Again, it feels like everyone who had poor performances on the first day or picked up unexpected losses into another team that just come into the day too fresh. We t heard it in the interview from a vault to the jungler. Says the team feels a whole lot better after getting some rest, and it shows the teams that maybe didn't show up yesterday are really showing up today. Yeah, exactly right. And there are some teams like the Chiefs that have international experience, so they're going to show up a little bit better game uh, day one. Other teams are going to be very nervous. Day two, you shake the nerves off. You've experienced Turkey now as a whole team. You're playing in a familiar uh, atmosphere all of a sudden because you've had a day at your desk and you've been able to get things together. And all of a sudden, something just clicks and it seems to have done it this game for Hard Random. Yeah, a world of difference. And what a what a time for them to start winning as well. Now 2-2. Two and two. That actually equals the record, I believe, with the Chiefs. So all of a sudden, there's, you know, a clear-ish top two and it's like, Four teams right in the middle as well. Three or four teams. Yeah, exactly right in the middle of the pack. And the worst thing now, Besiktas and Ince are going to be cursing the Chiefs because you've just given a team that had absolutely no momentum and probably you're thinking is going to be a cakewalk this day at 20,000 gold lead at 30 minutes. And they're going to feel unstoppable after that game. Yeah, and momentum's so important. Again, best of ones, it's hard to move yourself, to have to prepare for a different team, to move between games quickly and be like, man, I've got to reset. This team does completely different stuff. I have to go back again as we do have a replay from the last game as well. Yeah, so we'll pull that one up for you guys. And as you can see, it is just already a 4,000 gold lead at 16 minutes. You think the Chiefs, they might be able to stall out. But they just go for the dive straight away. We'll roll this one through and you'll see Smurf just being incredibly confident in his play. Able to go in there. It's actually Symphony that starts it off and a good ultimate comes through from Spook. So you think maybe this one will turn around. But they overcommit. You see Anivia coming up. Obviously Swiffer, who is the shot caller, making the big call to keep fighting. But right there, it's two for nothing. They could have got out, but everything starts going wrong. Smurf on the back line, dead. Uses his passive to take out Radiant. Then Swiffer falls, and all of a sudden, two for two, they're losing another turret. What should have been a Chief's window to get back into the game? They overcommitted, made a really decisive call, and a 
bit them really hard. It did, and I think Hard Random, most impressively, almost looked like they made close to zero mistakes in that game. You know, we've seen teams, even in their wins, have some moments where it's like, Maybe that didn't quite go the way they wanted, but kind of picking up what looked like a lot of strong individual skill yesterday were hard random and translating that wonderfully into team play. It was all team play in the first 15 minutes. Yeah, it certainly was. And look, you look at that dive and you think, wow, they overcommitted. But at the end of the day, they were able to get every single advantage out of an overcommitment. So in the end, they went for a turret dive. It didn't pay off, but then when it did pay off, that was proxying waves, taking turrets, make sure they were getting vision down on their exit. So they were just making the best out of every situation. And that's what League of Legends is at the end of the day. It's a game of small wins, being able to control certain areas of the map. They controlled everything but the Chiefs base. And in the end, even that was theirs. And yeah, just really big credit to these guys because we hadn't seen that out of them before. I have to say, I'm getting a slight trend here in the International Wildcard Invitational. The team with at least one mid-game threat seems to be finding good spots to use and then taking over games because you look at the team comps, very similar here. And it was Graves that was doing so much work at the 20-minute mark. Yeah, I definitely agree with you. And that's why the Callista builds are confusing. Go towards that mid-game, pick up the Hurricane, be able to take over because you're completely right. If you have that threat that gives you the control over the game, it gets you to the late-game situation where everyone else is ahead. And I actually think we have a replay of the last team fight coming in here. And as you look across the items, that's what you need to take a big screenshot of. Every single member is at least one major item ahead of their counterpart. So what does that mean? As we roll this one out, it means that Symphony can go absolutely nuts. He sees Swiffer off to the side, gets a fantastic ultimate. Everyone is stacked up. Good disengagement comes through, but all of a sudden, Kira on the back line, tearing through everyone. Smurf dies in, gets a huge knock up on three members, and they're just using their advantage to force the situation. When you're that far ahead, they were 10,000 gold ahead when they started that engage up, you can just brute force everything. Yeah, and I have to say, again, using what was a pretty bad stage comp creatively with their advantages to even push down structures here. I mean, Hard Random barely put a foot wrong there in that game, and we might start seeing Graze bans against certain teams because Bangkok Titans got more games coming up today. Still the only undefeated team actually in the tournament, and Lloyd's Graves is pretty good as well. Yeah, it certainly is. So a couple of Graves players coming through here. That was all about... The uh, Gragas ultimate starting that one up for me, though. Symphony pulling the trigger, burning the summoner spell out of Swiffer, and then Kira having, I guess, the guts to flash in there and get a massive ultimate down, and it was just awesome. Yeah, but with that, we're going to go over to an interview. One of your favorite champions. What do you think about the enemy team's performance with Anivia? Mm, uh, Anivia is really... Mm, like different champion, uh, she's really strong, but it's hard to play with her. So, and if p enemy player know how to play with her, you will not do anything. You can only farm, 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 and other things are on your team. If mm, your team like 50-50, you will be good. If not, it would be really hard. Okay, so after losing the first game, did you guys think that this is your last chance? Yeah, of course, we thought that it's last chance, but still we lost like two times. Finally, we have feeling like, whew, like always, we lose. It's nice. So we can play our game. Okay, so you have dominated this game, like really dominated the game. And do you think you can keep this performance for the other matches and games? Uh, I think um, it would be hard, but we can if we will not like uh, tilt or something like this. So thank you for the interview. Now back to Zenit. Much needed boost of confidence they're coming through for Hard Random. We caught it their last chance there for that game and thank God they won. You can see quite relieved there as the mid lane player. They've got a good shot of making playoffs now. Yeah, definitely. They're really in with a chance. Can get going, especially if they're able to take out the rest of the day with a couple of wins against Besiktas and Ints. That's... Yeah, as I said, this is a snowball. If they can start pushing it downhill, the sky's the limit. Well, they've got a couple more games to play today, but don't go too far away. After the break, we will return.